Welcome back guys. Today we're going to get you set up with some basic TIG settings. So let's get started. So whether you are welding mild steel, some stainless, or maybe even a trunk of chromoly, you are going to want to have your machine in DC negative. Now every machine is going to look a little different, but in my case we are right here. Electrode DC negative. Next thing you're going to want to set up is your amperage. Now your amperage is going to be somewhat contingent on the thickness and type of material that you're using. But there's a couple general guidelines that you can start with. So let's say for instance we're going to be welding this chunk of 8th inch mild steel. So you can get your measuring implement out and double check that you're an eighth of inch thick. So the general rule of thumb for this is going to be one amp per thousandth of an inch. So an eighth of an inch chunk of material is 125 thousandths. Therefore, the general rule of thumb says that you would set your machine to 125 amps. Now this is going to vary whether you are running a pedal or a scratch start. If you're running scratch start, you're going to set this to 125 amps and you're going to get a 125 amps out of it. Whereas if you have a pedal, that 125 amps is spread out across the range of your pedal. Meaning that at zero pedal, you have zero amps. At full pedal, if your machine is set to 125 amps, you're going to get 125 amps at full pedal. At half pedal, you're going to get somewhere around 60 amps when your machine is set at 125 amps. Now there's a couple different approaches when it comes to setting your amperage when you have a pedal. I know some people that like to set it to the amperage that they're going to run so they can run their pedal all the way to the floor the whole time through the duration of their weld. I know other people that like to crank the machine all the way up and just use the pedal to regulate their heat across the board. Now there's pros and cons to both these methods. The pro to setting your machine closer to the thickness of material that you're going to be running, it is going to be easier to hit that perfect window of amperage. When you're welding along, that perfect weld is usually within probably about a 10 amp variance, maybe even a 5 amp variance. And when your full range on that pedal is 125 amps to zero, it's going to be easier to hit that 10 amp mark than if your range on the pedal is 300 amps to zero. That 10 amps is going to be a much larger target to hit. The downside to that is in the event that you need more amperage to get that material melted in a pinch, your only option is to sit there and let your puddle heat up. Now I'm going to recommend a rule that's going to meet somewhere right in between these two. What I'm going to recommend is you go by the general rule of thumb with one amp per thousandth and then you go up 50 amps from there. Now you're going to say 50 amps, that's going to be putting way too much heat into the part. Now that is a large misconception that a lot of people have. Amperage does not equal heat. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our eighth inch chunk of material and I'm going to take my torch and we're going to set the machine to a hundred and twenty five amps so that we are using our general rule of thumb. And I'm going to take and make a small little puddle here. Now we've got our little puddle here that you can see that we've made with our 125 amps. And you can see the size of the heat signature here. Now what I'm going to do is turn our machine down to, let's say 75 amps. So now we should be a lot cooler, right? We're well below the rule of thumb. We're not going to overheat our weld, right? So let's see what happens. So what do we have here? This is super interesting. So I made the puddle as close as I could to our original 125 amp puddle to the same diameter. And in fact, if I stick the calipers on it, I believe the 75 amp one is even a little bit smaller. But to achieve the same size of puddle, we had to hold our position there for a little bit longer and a longer duration. And what happens is we actually end up putting more heat into it. So you can see we held there for a longer duration and you can see this heat signature is much greater. So this is at 75 amps and this is at 125 amps. Now let's go to the rule of thumb that I'm suggesting. So with our 125 thousandths, 
We're gonna turn our machine to 125 and then we're gonna add 50 amps to that. So when we come down here to 125 and then we add 50, that puts us right at 175 amps. Let's see what happens. Now look at this, this is super interesting here. So, from left to right, we have 75 amps, we have 125 amps, and we have 175 amps. Now even though our puddles are all relatively the same size, in fact our 75 amp one is a little bit smaller, the important thing to look at is our heat signature size. Now our 175 amps came in at roughly 3 eighths of an inch of any heat signature. Our 125 amps came in at about 5 eighths of an inch. And honestly, our 75 amp one is a little big to measure because it's kind of off the charts on the side here. I'm gonna guess that it's like inch, inch and a quarter. So I hope that example busted that myth of heat relating directly to amperage. Now don't get me wrong, you do have to have amperage to create heat, but amperage does not equal heat. Now you may say, well, how do I regulate my heat then? This goes back to episode number one in feeding your rod, and I'm gonna keep beating that bush. This is the reason I did this first. The two primary things that are gonna give you the most control over your heat is gonna be your travel speed, and two, how much filler rod you're putting in. So that is just one opinion of how to set up your amperage. Everybody's gonna have a different opinion. Find out what works best for you. So the next accessory that there are multiple different ways to set up is your torch and consumables. When it comes to your torch, there are multiple different sizes, there are multiple different configurations that you can get in different preferences for people. There's different size back caps for getting in tighter areas, there are different lengths of consumables, and there are different types of consumables. What I recommend when you are starting out is I recommend you start out with the standard consumables. So what I mean by standard consumables are going to look something like this. You're going to have a smaller or more standard size cone with a smaller orifice. I recommend like a number five or a number six. And then you are going to have your standard diffuser or call it body as some people call it, which is going to look something like this. And then you have your tungsten electrode and your call it and your back cap. I recommend using the longer back cap to start with because then you can fit a full size tungsten in there because when you're starting out, you're gonna be sharpening your tungsten like crazy. Now there are other things like gas lenses and other shaped consumables, but I do not recommend getting into those until you get much more proficient and better at TIG welding for a couple reasons. Number one, your standard consumables are just going to show you everything that you're doing in your weld. It will not hide anything. It is going to be a raw telltale of what your skills are. Number two, a standard collet body is not going to get messed up as easy as a gas lens. A gas lens has super fine screens inside of it and if you're dipping that rod on accident you can get splatter up in there and ruin your gas lens and these things are not cheap. So I guess the main message that I wanted to convey today, guys, is if you're getting way too much heat into your welds, turn that amperage up a little bit so you do not have to spend as much time in one spot to achieve your pedal size and practice your dry runs and feeding your rod. This will help so much into keeping that heat signature down so that you can be smoother, move along that weld a little faster, and come up with a much better result. So thanks for watching. If you wanna follow me on Instagram to see the other builds that I do during the week, follow me at am underscore customs underscore and go build something guys.